Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytech. Today I will show you how you can build this 737 air conditioning panel and connect it to your simulator via MobiFlight and Prosim. I'm using three 10k potentiometers, but because the shaft is a little bit too long, I have to shorten it first. You will need one big on-off switch. An 8 position rotary switch. And this gauge covering. The manufacturing process is shown in my last video. The panels are connected with screws and these 15mm hex standoffs, which are also the holders for the backlighting panel. Three annunciators are glued in place. And some switch caps and aluminum shafts cover the switches and make them look as real locking switches. The gauge is a single needle one and the construction steps are explained in detail in the dedicated video. Now when all the switches are connected here, I realized that MobiFlight isn't supporting potentiometers here. Okay, I could have looked up this earlier, but now I have to deal with the situation. So uh, how can I receive the signals from these potentiometers? And I found a solution and this comes with an Arduino Pro Micro. This is a small variant of an Arduino that can be recognized by a computer as a joystick. And these three potentiometers here will be axis of this joystick. And so every movement of the potentiometer is a movement of the axis and I can assign the axis to different functions in ProSimulator. There are two Arduinos that can do the job here. The one is this Arduino Pro Micro and the other one is the Arduino Leonardo. You just have to look out that there is the 32U4 chip on the board here. You can see me soldering this Arduino to a breakout board and I have soldered the pins the other way around as it is supposed because with this direction I will still be able to look at the bottom of the Arduino and the writings there and see which pin has which function. An Arduino Uno or a Mega can do this job. There might be some hacks out there in the web which change the firmware of the Arduino, but I want to keep this as simple as possible and so I have dealt with this type here. 
So now let's see what we have to do as programming here. I'm using this library here and you can find it on GitHub. I will post you the link to this library down in the video description. You can download this library and here is also a full description of every function and how to use it. And it comes with many code examples so that you can understand how to use it. Now let's have a quick look into the Arduino sketch I've installed on the Arduino and let's get through all the steps that are needed to make this work. First of all, I have included this joystick library here so it can be used. And here comes the constructor of this class. All programmers will know what I'm talking about, but for all the others, you don't have to fear this. This tells the class which function will be used here later in the code. And there are only these three values here set on true for the rotation of the x, y and z axis. Next, I have declared the variables I'm using, the control cabin, forward cabin and after cabin values. And here comes the setup function, which is called one time when the Arduino is started. Here I'm declaring all the pins that I'm using, a zero, one and two which are three analog pins of the Arduino. And then it is initialized. And here comes a loop function, which is called continuously, which checks the values of the axis. And it works that the value on the analog pin A2 is read and written to the concap value. And then the set function of the rotation of the X axis is called with this value. And so it is sent to the computer. And this is done for every other axis. And at the end, it waits a little bit of time. And this is all what you will need to program this Arduino. You just have to verify and upload it. And it will be recognized as a joystick from your computer. When the code is uploaded to the Arduino, then it will be already recognized as a joystick. And when you go here to your game controller settings, then there you will find the Arduino Micro. And now you have to calibrate the axis. I have the German version of Windows, but this will be here the property button. And then we go to calibrate. And now it asks me to um, move all the axes to the maximum positions. So the X axis here, full down, full up. And then continue. Now the Y axis, which is the middle knob here. Continue and last one, the Z axis, full up, full down. And it is finished. And now we can see here all the axes and let's check if this works. The X axis here in the middle position and full down works. Forward cap, which is the Y axis works. And the last one here, it is full up and full down. So every axis is working here. In MobiFlight, I have declared some new devices. You can find this under settings and here are the MobiFlight modules. And there on my Arduino F here, I have declared some new components, three LEDs for the annunciators, a lot of buttons for the rotary switch and the trim air switch, and also a servo motor for the gauge. You can find all the names of the components, the offsets and the pins I have sorted them to in my connection sheet, which I have updated on my website. I also declared the outputs, which is the gauge and the three annunciators and as inputs, all the switches. Before we configure all the elements in Prosim, we have to ensure that our new joystick device is recognized by Prosim. You can see here my Arduino Micro is already in the list. If it isn't in yours, then you go to Config and Configuration and here under Drivers ensure that the direct input support for joysticks is enabled. 
First of all, I want to configure my three potentiometers here. And I go to config configuration and the combined config tab. And here in the pneumatic section, we'll find these values in the analog category. And there they are, the three selectors. And let's start with a control cabin selector. And I can choose my Arduino. And it is already assigned to the X axis, which is right. Now I want to assign the Y axis to the forward cabin selector. Again, my Arduino and change this to Y rotation. And the last here, the aft cabin, it is already assigned to the Z rotation. And that is all we need for the three potentiometers. I won't show you the detailed configuration of all the switches and LEDs here in Prosim because I have done this in videos before and you can look up the needed steps in these videos. But I want to show you where you can find the needed values. Again, here in the pneumatic category, you will find the switches under switches here. And here you have the rotary switch with all the values and down you will find the trim where do we have it here in the trim air on switch and you can configure it there the leds can be found under indicators and here you have these three zone temperature indicators that you can assign the values to which you will need again if you want to build your setup as mine then you can find the values you have to enter here in the connection sheet on my website. But I want to show you again the configuration of the gauge. And you can find this here under gauges. And there we'll find the cabin temperature gauge. I have realized that there are different versions of this gauge on the market. The picture I reference to most of the times has a scale from, you can see this here, 0 to 100 degrees. Other gauges have a value from minus 15 to 40 degrees. Prosim is covering all of these values here. And so it depends on the gauge you are using in your setup, which values you have to declare here. I will first set up this zero point. I have running prepared and MobiFlight in the background. And now I will enter here my offset. I have chosen an FSUI PC 8-bit unsigned offset. And here we have already the correct offset 66DE. This is what I have chosen. And when I now move the slider here you can see again the needle moving and we can do this fine-tune this with the arrow keys so i think this should work here for the zero point the minus 15 point i will set uh, to a value here where it sends a zero over um, FSUIPC and so I say this will be the minus 15 point and now the other value is the 20 value like this 40 there we are 60 there we have it 80 like this and 100 and we have configured this gauge and finally after all the configuration work is done we can test all the controls here on this panel and adjust the controls because I haven't found a way to raise the temperature until now. You have seen the gauge is working, but maybe you can write down in the comment section uh, some hints for me. How can we increase the temperature for the passengers a little bit to um, get it more comfy for them? So just write it down in the comment section. But now to the other switches here. 
I have again running a prepared and Mobi flight in the background. And now when we are moving some switches, we should see a result here in ProSim displays. So let's start with a rotary switch here. It is on control cabin, forward is working, aft, forward temperature here from the passenger cabin and aft and right and left. Everything is working. Okay, this is good. Trim air off and on. And here we can see the results of movement of our joystick axis. Everything is working here. And by clicking onto the lights here, we can test the LEDs. Control cabin, forward cabin, working, after cabin, working. Everything is fine here. You can see the switches of um, the joystick axis here of these temperature regulators moving a little bit. This isn't bad, I think, but I want to reduce this more. And I think this can be possible when you change the coding of the update functions in the Arduino here. I think this can be done when you implement something like a dead zone. And that means that we don't just read out the input on the Arduino pin and set it to the computer, but we compare it to a last saved value. And only if the difference between these values is higher than a special value, then you set the new value to the computer here. And I think with this method, we should get rid of this uh, wobbling here of the switches. And another panel section is working in my overhead setup. I will move on to the next panel section. There are still some more to build. And if you want to build your own cockpit at home, then you should have a look at my member section on my website. There you will find all the needed files for download. You will find the SketchUp files for all the woodworking parts I've done and you will find all the files that you will need to cut out and engrave your own panels and all the accessories like gears or motor holders and so on. And don't miss my upcoming live stream. I think at the end of January, four years of Mikey's flight deck here on YouTube. Let's have an evening with questions and answers, maybe a little bit of laser topics now. So stay tuned to the upcoming announcement of this live stream. So subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. And I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.